Hello and welcome back to another reaction. In this occasion, Avatar The Legend of Korra episode 8. Yes, last week I wasn't able to uh, to record. There were so many things I needed to do and unfortunately I was, yeah, I didn't have any time. I, I, these weeks is are very heavy. So yeah, there is a lot of things to do, what I need to do for my job. So that's why it's kind of the erratic, uh, the erratic uh, posting uh, program. But anyway, yes, we are finally back and the story is taking off. The story is really now taking off. Again, the first episode you expect it to be, you know, the character development or character presentation for your main character so you can get to know them and you can get to see how they are. These obviously are uh, coming to an end. We still see, we still start to uh, meet uh, these characters, at least to know them better. But now the story is really taking off with uh, the plot against Amon. Amon obviously being the main villain so far and uh, the network of contacts that he has, all the power that is uh, political, economical, and obviously the raw power that is Amon and his followers. Because it's not just a revolution, it's not just this... Yeah, this terrorist group that is considered just, well, that, just uh, trying to just attack without a, a real goal or without a, a real plan. But actually Amon is smart enough to have a real plan and to have things to support that plan in any way not just again it's not just the raw power it's not just the destruction it's not just the pure attack but actually to have something else for him to be able to be uh, you know better than he was before and we saw set contacts we saw set contacts with something i did not see previously i did not even think about these new characters uh, they were irrelevant until the last few episodes that we saw. So, I think I'm speaking way too much in this presentation and I doubt you're here to just hear me rambling of what I said in the last episode, in the last reaction. So, let me just quickly remind you that if you enjoy the content of the channel, please consider a subscription and turn on notifications. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video and leave a comment so I know what you think about my reaction, the episode or my commentary once you see it. Remember, the link for the reaction is in the description below alongside with my Twitter and Patreon. Anyway, yes, without further ado, let's cut the presentation short and watch the video, shall we? Okay, I'm back. I just watched a uh, second time the eighth episode of the first book of Korra. Um, again, the, the, the episode started very calm, very, you know, adapting to a new life. We're going to take time to do this. We need to train something else. That's what I feel the episode was about. That obviously we need to train the air element because Korra doesn't know how to do it. And he has been able to produce even a fart of wind, let's say. <laughs> Uh, but yes, Korra is not very good with um, airbending, even if she is the avatar. Again, the first part of the episode is very calm. The second half is just budget crazy, man. It's, it's just really going from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. It's just so fast. It, you, you did not expect something like this. Again, yeah, it's cute to see, I don't know, the kid having kind of his first crush with this beautiful woman, which is, yes, she's gorgeous, I agree with the little kid, uh, but again, it's adapting, oh, Mako, uh, oh, sorry, oh, Asami discovered that Korra likes Mako and all of that, and you see the elements of jealousy after a successful um, capture of prisoners and cheap lockers and, well, the revolution in general. So, yeah, it was saying, okay, we're going to have our funny moments, our... A heroic moment for the team avatar, the new team avatar, and uh, we're going to have this. And then in, in future episodes, we're going to see uh, how they are going to stop them, how this is going to go wrong. But no, actually, the show said, Screw that, we're going to show you how this is going to go wrong right fucking 
now. And that is what happened. That is what is uh, what is going on with this episode. All the political plots that we have within this uh, this universe are obviously very intriguing. If you just focus yourself in that, it will be boring. It's rare to get invested into something like that. You want action, you want, yeah, politics, but kind of in the background, uh, you got to see them. And that is what the show did. They gave us politics, but in the background. It's kind of what is, uh, what is the origin of this conflict. That is what the political part of the episode is, is about. It's just the seed for all the conflicts that we are going to see. Again, among I think Among is still our main villain. He is still the main bad guy. But uh, Turlock is becoming a second choice. And this is the interesting thing. There are possibilities within this, uh, this uh, subplot. Either Torlock is with the revolution and wants to deliver everything to the revolution. He wants to be something else for him to be the only bender that could well, bend. Uh, perhaps if this is the case, perhaps uh, perhaps Amon was, was just, I don't know, deceiving him, saying, oh yeah, sure, you can keep your bending. But actually what is going to happen in the end, he's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a race. The bending, the water bending that he has is going to be a race. There is another possibility, and I think the second one is the one that is the more uh, accurate. What I think is really happening is this guy, Turlock, and this is just by the mere moments I saw the, ba the flashback in Korra's mind, is the son or is related to this prisoner that we saw in the flashbacks. They were locked in or they were executed by law or something along the line. So he hates, he hates the Avatar, he hates uh, all the friends of the Avatar and he's wanted to take revenge on the next generation. In this case, Tencent, uh, Chief uh, Beifong and all the people that are related to the Avatar, Ang and his friends. That is what I think is going on. And he is plotting his revenge by stripping all of them from their power. Tencent is no longer... He's a councilman, but he's always... Uh, I don't know. He's, he's always against whatever Turlock is saying. And Turlock, unfortunately, has come out on top of all the things that we are seeing. And then she, he put in a place in which he knew that Chief Bayfon was going to fail and she fails and she, she becomes more powerful and more powerful with each action he's taken. So he is really ruining the lives of somebody who is related to the Avatar or friends of the Avatar, of Avatar Ang, I mean. So that's, that, that is his point. Obviously gain power, take revenge and become well, the most powerful man in this Republic city. Perhaps even just transform the entire city not into this Republic, into this, uh, well, they're ruled by, uh, by council, by these five people that represent the other nations, but actually to rule by him. Just become a, a kind of a monarch, kind of a dictator. Obviously, he's not going to be referring himself as a dictator, but that is basically what I think Turlock wants. He wants to rule over Republic City and all the affiliates of this new Republic that Ang and Zuko, uh, you know, created back then. That is what I think the plan of Turlock is. I think I'm more inclined to this second uh, theory because, again, Turlock is smart. I don't think he will believe for a second that Among is going to forgive his bending. So I'm betting more on the second one. And he wants power and he wants revenge. What I said that I want revenge because the prisoner that we saw briefly in those flashbacks it looks a lot like him. And from what I see in the flashback, in this mere few seconds that we saw, he also can blood bet. So that is my most accurate bet. I don't know if they are related to the old lady from Avatar The Last Airbender that uh, taught uh, Korra how to... Korra. <laughs> uh, Katara how to bloodbend. I don't know if that is the case. 
perhaps it is, perhaps it's not. I don't know. There, there are so many possibilities here. There are so many things here. So that is my main theory as to why Sherlock wants power. Well, obviously for power itself, but for revenge too. Now, this is again intriguing because we are seeing so many different types of attitudes. From Tencent who wants to be kind of not giving an aggressive an aggressive response, he wants to be let the storm pass, be more uh, more calm, more collected. That's what Tencent is. Obviously, Turlock wants more immediate action because this is what is going to give him power. The other three are almost irrelevant. The other three councilmen are just almost irrelevant. They have no voice or real voice in our perspective for it to be considered important. So the only important ones in this council is Turlock and is Tencent. Those are the ones that we are, have to be observing. Now, there are several things I want to say about the laws that were passed by the council, councilmen and women. This is probably just a tyranny, a pure tyranny. Yeah, you might say, oh, but the tyranny is a tyrant. Yes, but they are trampling the rights of their own people for their fear because they don't want, they don't know what to do, whatever. But they are not giving them their rights. This is a tyranny. And the closest one we have for a tyrant is Turlock. Because he is in charge. Because even when Tencent say the chief of police released these people, he couldn't do anything. Because the real boss of him is Turlock. That's what it is. We don't know why he is so loyal, because he's perhaps blackmailing or he's promising more power. We don't know. But there is something shady there. Now, there are things I want to mention. I don't, I don't recall the exact saying, but it goes along the lines of this. When you sacrifice freedom to fight terror, you are going to lose both because of fear. I think is if you sacrifice uh, freedom uh, because of fear, you're going to uh, if you sacrifice rights or something along those lines that you're going to lose in both sides. You are not going to be safer. Safety. I think if you sacrifice freedom for safety, you're going to lose both. I think that is the exact same. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that is true. They have really lost their freedom. The freedom of walking. The non-benders. Benders are obviously fine with it because it is not affecting them. Why they say they're going to lose both? Because now those people that were on the edge, they were saying, okay, Among is a terrorist. I don't want to follow him. I don't care if I'm not a non-bender, what he's saying is bullshit, I don't want to be on his side. He is a person that just terrorized in the city and I don't care about him. There are people who are going to follow him, of course there are going to be people who are following him. Those are a minority, still is a minority. They are more noticeable because it's a loud minority. They destroy, they attack, they do whatever, they train, they are doing something else. But the vast majority, and this is something I know for a fact, are non-benders who doesn't want to attack anybody, who are just abiding the law. And that's it. But with this action of this curfew that non-benders have to be imposed upon, they are going to say, okay, fuck it, my own government is against me. The only way for me to be free is if I join this revolution. So you are sending more people to Amon. Amon, if he's seeing this, if he's hearing the news, he's smiling because this is exactly what he needs. He needs more power and he's gaining more power. This is all in favor for Amon. So, yes, and we can see this desperate state. 
they are just desperate. These non-benders say, okay, help us. We are not, you are powerless against you because if we try to fight back, you're going to bend something, bend the earth, bend, the earth, bend water, bend whatever, bend fire, and you're going to oppress us, and you are oppressing us. So we can do anything, help us. And when they see that even the Avatar is unable to help them, they're going to say, okay, fuck it. Let's go to Amon. He is the only one who is really doing something for us. The Avatar is not doing anything for us. So, literally, Trulok is sending more people to Amon. He's giving him more power to Amon. And that is a tyranny again. I understand the fact of illegal uh, association with the revolution. Obviously, that is okay. If you go there, you're already a criminal because you are going to commit acts of terrorism. That is what is expected from you. You don't have any more rallies in the street because those were allowed, allowed at least not rallies for the revolution. So yeah, it's understandable. That is a part of the law that I say, okay, sure. I understand that it's illegal to join this particular group. It's like, it's, it's, it's like wanting to join the Ku Klux Klan. Or the Nazis, yeah, the, the, obviously that should be illegal because this group just wants to harm another human being. But the second part, with the curfew, is another business. It's different. This is now you are taking this way too far. Your non-vendors are not the enemy. The revolution is. The people who really believe the crap that Among said is the real enemy. And that's a problem. And you're sending in more ammunition to the enemy. There is, uh, there is a deeper thing in here, and I like that. I like the fact that they are giving us a lot of entertainment and a lot of stuff. And obviously, the cliffhanger of where Korra is going to be taken. How is this going to be resolved? Who is going to help Korra? Or Korra is going to be able to escape on her own? I don't know. And I cannot wait to find out. But obviously, I don't have time to do that right now. Uh, and yes, I exhausted the topic of this one. A fascinating episode. And I'm so glad I returned to this series right now. But anyway, as I said before, let me just remind you that if you enjoy the content of the channel, please consider a subscription and turn on notifications. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment so I know what you think about my reaction, the episode, or my commentary. If you want to follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description below. And remember, in the description is also the link to the reaction and to my Patreon. So yes, I think that's it. I really, really, really exhausted the topic of this one. I hope you enjoy it, and I have nothing else to say, but thank you for your attention, and well, see you on the next one. Bye. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, give it a like, so the algorithm from YouTube will help me out. And check my other videos, share them, and also, why not subscribe to my channel and join this community. And as always, I want to thank you for your attention, your likes, and even your dislikes, your comments, which is something I always look forward to read, and yeah, once more, thanks, and see you on the next one.